in the river to pray, studying about that good old way. The starry crown, good Lord, show me the way. My name's Liam Hawks and I came to Ambo in the summer of 2012. The people that I went before had said what a brilliant experience it was, but I could never really grasp what they meant because it's really something you have to experience to understand. We're so used to seeing ads on television uh, of a different side of Africa. We see like a desert and starving children and stuff like that. While there may be some aspects of that here, it's a completely different country to what you're thinking. But uh, I found just a... Uh, extremely warm Ethiopian people so happy with what little they might have and so eager to learn and to be friendly and take part in different games and things like that with us here. And you shall wear the sorry I've always been involved in uh, the same Vincent Paul Society in school and we've been told about this trip for so many years since first year about how great of an experience it really is. I want to put myself out of my comfort zone and really experience life in a different light. And I definitely have, it's the kids and the workers here, it's just so hard working and friendly. They're absolutely amazing, they're happy with anything they have. Hello, my name is Darren McGowan. Well, I've been here for about a week and a half now. And uh, initially when I, when I went to the airport, when I arrived in Addis, um, the apparent wealth was, was quite amazing. People had the latest technological gadgets and Life didn't seem much different to, to life in Ireland. That, once we step out of the uh, out of the out of the airport, the airport really was a shelter of prosperity, and then we just step out into this whole new, different world. And then we just we saw the, the humidity, we saw we saw the poverty straight away, dust being kicked up into the, into the sky in general areas. And uh, then we stepped into the car and we just travelled down to Ambo, and uh, that was really when we started to witness the poverty of the area. James Stafford. Yes. Uh, the weather, uh, because it's the rainy season, it's not the best so far, but we still get the good uh, sunshine. The six students, uh, we live in well, three bedrooms. We share uh, the room, so two per room. Uh, we have a, a bathroom in the like in our building, uh, but the running water is kind of a problem. Like. Uh, the toilets don't really flush, so you have a bucket of, uh, and you just fill it with water and then you just throw it down the toilet, which... Uh, this is Father John Gallagher's corner, and uh, he's the main man in our school behind this project. It was lashing rain, and they, they walked for, like, I don't know how long they walked, like, miles to get to school. And, and they come in and they're drenching rain and sitting down, not even saying anything about being covered, head to toe in the water. So, like, was, like in Ireland, I don't think we value it, our education enough. Uh, hi, my name is Daniel Byrne. I'm going to realise how much I have, and it's probably going to make me focus more and drive myself more because I know that kids here don't have the same opportunities. So if I don't take them, it would re really just be a waste. Because what we have, we go to a private school. Kids here, they go to school with clothes that have been wearing for the same five days. And yet they're enthusiastic and some of the kids have even spoke Irish to me. So it, it really does hit home, so it will just drive you on. Like, it's such a good experience, it's, it's so hard to describe. It really, really is. So tell me Sigist, why is it a good thing that Kassanoff Cottage and St Paul comes to Ambo. Okay, thanks a lot. We get a lot of um, advantage to be with the Kasnoks and simple students. We are able to talk with foreign people, especially with the, Irli the Irish peoples. You know, we get a lot of knowledge that we didn't get from the regular school in Ambo. So we get how to communicate with the people with English, especially with an international um, teachers and students. Yeah. And uh, what is your ambition for uh, for your later life, uh, thanks to this uh, to this project? 
I want to be the doctor and especially this project gave me the opportunity to overcome my dreams. And, and uh, just yesterday you got a, an amazing report. Uh, you said that you do 12 subjects yeah. and I think it was 11 of those subjects where you got higher than 90%. Yeah. That is uh, truly phenomenal. Well done, Sigist. Thanks a lot. Well, we've had an amazing time. The lads that we brought over have been fantastic and it's, it's obviously uh, so touching to meet all the kids here. They've been uh, so giving of their love. A steep learning curve with the, with the teaching. Um, I think we kind of we kind of have it now at this stage. We've really enjoyed the experience um, and it's been, it's been like no other uh, really. And, uh, I'm sure something we'll hold on to for a long time to come. I definitely would try to spend less uh, I try to get more into my community, definitely a lot more, because Father Gometu, like runs a lot of the community around here. Mm -hmm. You know, everyone knows him, and uh, it seems to bring him a lot of joy. So. Things in Ireland are completely taken for granted, whereas here you make the most out of out of the smallest scraps, and life is just completely different here. Completely different perspective on life when I go home. It really will just make you appreciate every little thing you have. You'll try to get that message across to everyone to help out where you can. And it really, really does make a difference. We can see over here all the fundraising we've done, where it's gone. I realise just how lucky I am. Like I, I feel guilty for any sort of complaint I'd had before about not having enough of this, not having enough of that. When you come out here and see the basics that people manage to get by, by on, and just so happy. Like uh, my religion teacher always says, uh, money, money doesn't bring you happiness. It, it'll bring you comfort, but not happiness. And it's so true when you come out here and see how happy people are with. The bare, the bare necessities, and I'm uh, it'll it'll change me forever. Now. It's so difficult to share your house with all these young students. Uh, not to me, that opened the door. God opened the door. Let's say, God is always good. God. And I'm sharing that His goodness. My first dream is so was uh, to help the poor, to be with the people, to do something visible in Ambo, uh, to give them something in education. Deaf is marginalized here in Ambo. Nobody is talking about them. Nobody is giving place for them. Are there many, were, are many children around here who will avail uh, of the school? About those who are registered are um, about um, 106. And, uh, we hope so, out, out of Ambo, uh, there are a lot of deaf children. His friend, um, his good friend of uh, Father Stephen, Manan. His name is uh, Wendy Magin Tushome. Your name? This is library. And uh, going to finish in one month's time. Um, founder, St. Vincent de Paul. Okay. We are following his steps. And do you know the names of any of the students who are teaching you? Yeah, I know all of them. What were their names? Okay, when I started from the teachers, yeah. uh, Mr. Paul, yes, and Mr. Fergus, yeah. Stephen, yes, Liam, Lawrence, um, Dara, and James, Daniel, and Laurie. And Laurie. As I went down to the river to pray, studying about the good old way, and who shall wear the sturdy crown below to show me the way. Oh, sister, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, sister, let's go down, down to the river to pray. Brilliant. Best experience of my life. It's not fantastic. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown? Good Lord, show me the way.